Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Surrounds Dazzle Physics. In today's video guys, I'm going to be walking you through the ideal gas equations PV is equal to NRT, where it's a lowercase n, and PV is equal to NKT, when it's a capital N over here. I'm going to explain how we get the first equation and the second one and the link between them. So I'm going to start off with this equation and then we'll lead on to this one over here. So we'll start off with this one and then lead on to this one over here. Right, so hopefully you have a basic understanding of what a uh, gas is and you understand uh, how pressure works inside a gas. So over here, everyone, I have a box and it contains a gas. And as you can see, the particles are moving around. Yes, they're traveling across and they are colliding with the walls of the container. So when the particles collide with the walls of the container, what happens is they each collision exerts a force. So now every time it collides, it exerts a force. So each collision, let's say we look at this area over here, so this bit, let's call this an area A, there we go, that's the area A over here. Now you've got forces acting over a unit area, and therefore you will have pressure, because we should be familiar with pressure is equal to force divided by area. So the particles over here, they collide with the walls of the container, each collision exerts a force, you have a force acting per unit area, therefore you have a pressure. So from here, we can say that gases have pressure over here. So that's our starting point. So hopefully you're familiar with gases having pressure. Okay, now from here, we're gonna talk about the relationship between temperature and pressure. So what happens when you increase the temperature of a gas? What happens to the pressure? Okay, so over here, look, I've got two diagrams. On the left-hand side, we've got a uh, gas, and look, we can see the particles traveling around, and they are colliding with the walls of the container, yes? So low temperature, we should have a low pressure. But let's say we were to take the same gas, and keeping everything constant except the temperature, we're going to increase the temperature. What's going to happen? Well, the particles will gain kinetic energy. So these four particles, they will gain kinetic energy, and look, they will travel faster, yes, across, yes? So as they are traveling faster, what happens is they will collide more often with the walls of the container. So there will be more collisions per second. If there are more collisions per second, there's a greater force acting per second. And therefore, we know that there will be a greater pressure. So we have a low temperature, we have a low pressure, but when you have a high temperature, we notice that the pressure increases. So we're gonna put down a high pressure over here. There we go. So that's a simple link that if you increase the temperature, what happens is the pressure increases. Now from here, let's plot a graph of temperature versus pressure. Okay, so over here we've got the graph of pressure versus temperature over here. Right, so the first thing to note is that, look, the graph uh, is going to be, pressure will be measured in Pascal, but the temperature will be measured in Kelvin, yes, not degree Celsius. So Kelvin is another unit of uh, temperature over here. Uh, if you're struggling with this concept, click on the video down in the description and I'll walk you through where the Kelvin scale comes from. Basically, it's really simple. If you want to go from degrees Celsius to Kelvin, all you're going to do is simply add 273. Yes, right now. If you want to go from Kelvin to degrees Celsius, we know you have to subtract 273. So it's a simple conversion between degrees Celsius and Kelvin and Kelvin to degrees Celsius. But obviously, if you're still struggling, check out that video in my description. It will walk you through where it comes from. Right, so now from here, we know that there's a relationship between pressure and temperature. So we can say that pressure is directly proportional to the temperature, provided that the pressure is in Pascal and the temperature is in Kelvin. Yes, the temperature has to be in Kelvin. So we've got one relationship right now. We know that as they increase the temperature, the pressure increases. Okay, so we've got one relationship. Let's look at another relationship. Let's talk about pressure and volume. So when you change the volume, what happens to the pressure? Right, okay, so look, we've got the gas over here in the container right now, and we're going to reduce the volume. So from here to there, we're going to reduce the volume over here. So we're going to reduce the volume. Right, so we've got these four particles inside. Uh, let's just write this down. So this is going to be a high volume at the start, and afterwards you're going to squash it down to over here. Therefore, you have a low volume at the end over here. Right, so look. On the left-hand side, we know that the particles are traveling and they're colliding with the walls of the container. But when you reduce the volume, what happens is the collisions, because there's less space for the particle to move, the collisions will happen more often. They will happen more frequently. So if there are more collisions per second over here, therefore we know that the pressure will increase. So when you reduce the volume, the pressure will increase because it will take you less time for the particles to travel across either side and therefore they will collide more often with the walls of the container. So therefore, we will have a high pressure over here. So it's a high pressure over here, and over here it will be a low pressure. 
Okay, now from here, let's plot a graph of pressure versus volume and see what it looks like. Hopefully you can see it already. Hopefully we can see that, look, as you increase the volume, the pressure decreases. Yes, they are inversely proportional to one another. So we can write down the next relationship that pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. There we go. That's our second relationship over here. So we've got one relationship already for pressure and temperature, which was this one over here. Pressure is directly proportional to the temperature. Temperature is in Kelvin. And over here, we've got pressure is proportional to 1 over V. Yes, pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. Now let's try and combine both those formulas together. Okay, so over here, look, pressure is proportional to the temperature. There we go. In Kelvin, pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. Combining them both together, we end up with the following. It becomes pressure is therefore proportional to the temperature and divided by the volume over here. So one equation for both of them. There we go, over here. So P is proportional to T over V. Excellent stuff. Now we can move from the proportional sign to the equal sign using a bit of mathematics. It will look like the following. So I'm just going to make some space. And therefore we can say that P is equal to a constant, yes, uh, times by T over V over here. Excellent stuff. Right, now we're going to move the V up right now. So we're going to go for uh, P V is equal to a constant... Uh, times by the temperature over here. Constant times by T, excellent stuff. Right, now, if we can finally get to the first formula. This constant over here, it actually is equal to, so this constant is actually equal to the number of moles, which is going to be lowercase n, let's write that down over here. So uh, it's going to be n is going to be, let's put it at the top, n is going to be equal to the number of moles, and yes, it's measured in mole, there we go. And the other bit is going to be times by R. R is called the molar gas constant, which is going to be 8.31 joule per mole per Kelvin over here. So 8.31 joule per mole per Kelvin over here. Excellent stuff. So look, the constant actually over here, and then we're going to times that by T once again. So look, don't forget the constant, we, they worked out to be equal to these two. And with all formulas, guys, make sure you know the correct units. It's going to be pressure as measured in Pascal. Yes, uh, PA, volume is measured in meters cubed. The number of moles is going to be in moles over here. And then uh, the molar gas constant over here, we said was joule per mole uh, Kelvin to the minus one. The temperature over here was going to be measured in Kelvin. So those are our units, guys, for this formula. Right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is going to be the molar gas constant. So the first thing is, don't forget, make sure you can see where the units come from. So where are those units coming from? Joule per mole per Kelvin, let's just verify it. Let's just rearrange this right now so we can look at the units of the molar gas constant. So therefore, R is equal to PV divided by the number of moles times by the temperature over here. Then plug all the units in. Pascal, we know it's going to be pressure. We know it's going to be measured in Pascal, PA. Uh, the volume is meters cubed over here. The number of moles is going to be mole over here at the bottom. And then the temperature is going to be in Kelvin over here. Right, don't forget what Pascal is. Um, don't forget we have pressure is equal to force divided by area. So the pressure is going to be measured in Pascal, which is the same as Newton per meter squared. Yes, force is in Newtons, area is meter squared. So replacing that over here, it becomes Newton per meter squared times by at the top meter cubed over here divided by mole. Uh, and we have the Kelvin over here. There we go. And therefore that line over here becomes... Uh, on this side over here, so it becomes Newton meter cubed divided by meter squared. That becomes Newton meter, yes. And the bottom line becomes uh, mole, and we have the Kelvin. But don't forget, we also know that work done is force times by distance, yes. So the work done is the same as Newton times by the distance, yes. Newton times by meter is the same as the joule over here. Therefore, it becomes joule and the mole comes up joule per mole kelvin to the minus one so there we go we now are able to verify the units of the molar gas constant so that's our first formula pv is equal to the number of moles lowercase n times by the molar gas constant r times by the temperature over here and something you won't see the time symbol over here so it will therefore be pv is equal to the nrt easy stuff Yes, that's our first point over here. So now we've got this formula, we're going to look at how do we get to that second formula where it looks slightly different, where we get a capital N. Where does that come from? Right, so we have this, PV is equal to lowercase nRT, but now let's talk about N. 
this N over here. What is it? What is a mole? Well, hopefully you can identify that a mole is simply a certain number of particles. One mole is basically equal to 6.02 times by 10 to the power of 23 particles. Let's say you're able to open up a bag and someone said, oh, inside I've put one mole of particles. Well, it's basically 6.02 times by 10 to the power of 23 particles. That is the number of particles inside one mole. This is also known as Avogadro's constant. So it will be given by the symbol capital N subscript capital A. So uh, let's put that down here. N A, this is known as Avogadro's constant. Avogadro's uh, constant. Yes, which will be given to you, uh, which will be obviously the 6.02 times by 10 to the power of 23 particles over here. Okay, right, so we have this new value now of here, over here, Avogadro's constant, capital N with a subscript, capital A. Now, from here, well, let's talk about, um, for example, how would you work out the number of moles that you have if you're given, like, a certain number of particles? So let's just say, for example, if uh, someone gives you, like, n particles, let's say, I don't know, you found n particles in your hand. Yes, you found n particles. And somebody asks you, how many moles have you got? So let's say you found n number of particles. So n, let's say this is the number of particles in a sample. Particles in a sample. Yeah, this is called an n. We don't know a random number. And I said to you, right, how would you work out the number of moles inside here? Well, it's very simple. To work out the number of moles, yes, which is, don't forget, the lowercase n, it is simply going to be the number of particles in a sample divided by the number of particles in one mole. Yes, the number of particles in the sample that you have divided by the number of particles inside one mole. So therefore, we can say that the number of moles that you've got is equal to the number of particles in your sample, number of particles in sample, divided by the number of particles in one mole. Number of particles in one mole. That's going to be the number of moles that you've got. Because you know that you've got X number of particles, therefore you divide by the number of particles that you've got in one mole. So the formula looks like the following. It'll look like this. Um, the number of moles is equal to N, the number of particles in your sample, divided by Avogadro's. Capital N, subscript capital A. N, A over here. Excellent stuff. So now we have this formula. The number of moles is equal to the number of particles in your sample, capital N, divided by Avogadro's constant, capital N, subscript capital A over here. Excellent stuff. Now from here, everyone, we're going to take this and substitute it into our formula at the top over here. So let's do this right now. So we know that uh, PV is equal to NRT. Yes, PV is equal to NRT. But the number of moles replacing it over here with this, so therefore it becomes PV is equal to the number of particles in your sample divided by Avogadro's constant NA times by the value of the molar gas constant R times by the temperature in Kelvin over here. Okay, so now from here, I'm just going to take this, yes, the... 1 over Na over here, and I'm going to shift it underneath this one. So therefore, it will become the following. PV is equal to the number of particles in your sample times by the molar gas constant divided by Na. Yes, times by the temperature in Kelvin. Don't forget, everyone in maths, make sure you can spot that. So that's the same as A times over B times by C is the same as AC over B. Yes, yes, make sure you can see what I've just done there. I've just shifted it underneath. Now from here, we can do the following. So the molar gas constant R, which we said was 8.31 joule per mole minus one, K to the minus one over here, divided by the Avogadro's constant, which was 6.02 times by 10 to the power of 23 over here. That is going to be a constant. That's going to be called Boltzmann's constant, everyone, which is going to be given the lowercase k over here. And the value of k, which will be equal to 1.38, 1.38 times by 10 to the minus 23 joule per Kelvin over here. Uh, joule per Kelvin over here. Right, so we're placing that over there. So therefore, it becomes PV is equal to the number of particles in your sample times by Boltzmann's constant k times by t over here. Excellent stuff. So now we've got this formula over here. So everyone, you might be required to use the top formula, PV is equal to NRT or PV is equal to NKT. Notice one was lowercase because it was a number of moles and the one at the bottom was the number of particles in your sample over here. One has got the molar gas constant, the other one's got the uh, Boltzmann constant over here. 
make sure you know when to use each of them, yes? But it's a simple equation and uh, let's do the units of the one below over here. We haven't done that over here. So this one, the pressure was in Pascal, the volume was still in meters cubed, the number of particles in your sample, that's going to be a number, so there's no units. Uh, the Boltzmann's constant was joule k minus one, yes? Uh, if you can rearrange that formula to work that out as well, you'll prove it as well. And the temperature is in Kelvin over here. Excellent stuff. Okay, let's tackle the following exam question. An ideal gas has a volume of 8.3 times by 10 to the power of 3 centimeter cubed. The gas is at initial temperature of 15 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 4.5 times by 10 to the power of 7 Pascal. Calculate the amount of gas in moles. Right, so look carefully what you've been given. You've got the volume over here, so this is the volume. Uh, you've got the initial temperature over here. This is going to be um, over here. This is going to be the temperature. Don't forget, this is in degrees Celsius. You must convert to Kelvin. And you've got 4.5 times by 10 to the power 7 Pascal. This is going to be the pressure over here. Calculate the amount of gas in moles. The amount of gas in moles over here. So you're trying to work out what? N, lowercase n, the number of moles. Right, so we know that uh, we have PV is equal to number of moles times by RT. And we also have PV is equal to NKT. Which one do I need? Well, obviously it's going to be this one over here because it's not the number of particles, it's the number of moles. So therefore, let's start off with PV is equal to NRT, therefore N is equal to PV divided by RT over here. The value of the pressure, 4.5 times by 10 to the power of 7, yes, close the bracket, times by the volume, the volume I've got, careful, uh, our value was you, let's convert this into meters cubed. So if we have 8.3 times by 10 to the power of 3 centimeter cubed, Converting that into meters cubed, careful with the meters cubed, don't forget it's cubed right now. Uh, I always think of the centi over here, this means times 10 to the minus 2, but you've got the three of them, yes, it's cubed. So this uh, over here to the power of 3, so it's going to be times 10 to the minus 6 over here. Times minus 2, there, there, yeah, so times 10 to the minus 6 over here. So therefore this becomes 8.3 times by 10 to the power of 3 times by 10 to the minus 6. This therefore becomes 8.3 times by 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed. So there we go, that goes over here. 8.3 times by 10 to the minus 3 over there. Divided by the molar gas constant, don't forget that was given to you. We know that the molar gas constant R is equal to 8.31. So divided by 8.31. The temperature, careful, the temperature, that's in degrees Celsius. Don't forget I said to you how to go from degrees Celsius to Kelvin. If you want to go from degrees Celsius to Kelvin, you need to add 273, yes? So 15 degrees Celsius is therefore equal to, so 15 degrees Celsius is therefore equal to 288 Kelvin over here. So times by 288 Kelvin over here. Therefore, this whole thing becomes this all works out to be, everyone, check your answers, 156.06 moles over here. Excellent stuff, yes, and that's going to be my answer, 156.06 moles. Yes, or oh, let's just round it up then, 156 moles. Excellent stuff over here. There you go, guys, that's me walking you through one question over here. So obviously, uh, the other formula is when you have uh, the number of particles in a sample over here, but if you're given the number of moles, you use this one on the left-hand side. So make sure you can see when to use each formula. So we've got PV is equal to number of moles times by the molar gas constant times by the temperature in Kelvin, and PV is equal to the number of particles in your sample times by the Boltzmann constant times by the temperature in Kelvin. And that's it for another session of Surrazzle Dazzle Physics. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going. And if you're still struggling in any of my content, comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. Or check out my YouTube channel, which has hundreds and hundreds of videos to help with your studies. Ciao, ciao and goodbye.